What's going on, peeps? Who's up in here? Yep, yep. Hey, Rash, what up, homie? Eddie, what's good, my man? What up, homie? God had the general. Let some people get up in here. Ride Bugs, Jordy Simmons, what up? That's my dude. I will. I'll tell Young Bangers you said what up. All right. Rick Wright, my dude, what up? Salute, Vagabond. All right. So, boom, bitty, bye, bye. I see you, girl. What up? All right. So, the purpose of tonight's IG Live is to have my good friend Mr. Liff on here, my good friend and uh, fellow artist. We collaborated on a project called Vanguard 2020 on Fat Beats Records. And um, while working on that, um, Gorilla Strong, thanks for copping that badge, homie. While working on that project, I got to know Liff and He's a good dude. He's a very intelligent dude. And um, yeah, I just got to know him well. And I thought it would be interesting for us to have an I have him on the IG Live. I'm doing these every Thursday um, at 7. I've gonna, Next week, I'm going to have, I think, C-Lance or DiBiase. DiBiase is a nasty beat maker. I'm going to have him on. I got a bunch of people lined up. Lord Goat's going to be on. Um, I'll have Bill on. So I just want to, you know, kind of work out the kinks, get these things going. So I appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, but yeah, Mr. Lift on tonight. Let me um, see where he's at. See if I can get him up in here. But that's where we're at with it. Um, what up, Tito? What up? What's good? Hope everybody had a good week so far. Um, Max Money, what up, homie? <clears throat> there we go, left. <laughs> My Yo, brother. Big Stu, man. Yo, what you up? know what? Man, I should probably get, I should probably pop the, um, see where my earbuds are at, man. Oh, I, might have caught, I might have gotten caught sleep. Oh no, I got my buds. Hold up, I thought I was slipping without them. Hold on one second. Let me get. Let me get this correct. Do you think? Do you think? <laughs> Mister Left in the building. Pyramids crew, what up, homie? Mister Left. Yep. Yo yo. All right, you got me now. You hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Got you. Yep. I got you. You can. You hear All right, me? word, word. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so I want to give you the introduction you properly deserve. Um, Liff has been a prolific, successful, talented MC in this indie hip hop thing since. Correct me if I'm wrong. Since the mid early late nineties, um, I yeah. first heard. Yeah, I first heard of Liff when I moved to Boston in '98. I moved to Jamaica Plain and I was working interning at Traffic Brick Records. And I started to see his vinyl and started bumping it with me and my homies when we had our turntables. Like, this dude is nasty. So I've always looked up to you, man. I've looked up to you since 98, 99, when I first heard you. And, um, you know, fast forward to 2020. And then I followed you when you were on Def Jux. I followed you doing your thing with Acrobatic, The Perceptionist. Bro. Yeah, classic material as far as me and my friends are concerned. I'm sure many, and we know many, many others. But fast forward to 2020. Um, to make this all about myself. When I got a chance to work with you, it was like, it was a dream. I was like, I'm getting paid to do this? I'm like, <laughs> sign me up, let's do it. And I just had a, bl a blast working with you and I got to know you as a person and I've considered you a friend, man. And I, th I thought it'd be sure. great to have you, gr great to have you on, on the interview. So, Mr. Lift, thank you for joining me, man. Bro, thank you so much, man, for everything you said, th those kind words, man. It's been a lot of years in the business and, I'm telling you, man, you know, getting to work with you, it's like another one of those, you know, it's like a breath of fresh air, you know what I'm saying? My brother, when it came along, when we started to build, 
because there's been there's been so many pivotal moments along the way. You know, you don't get to like a couple decades in this business without, you know, things happening, like blessing blessings coming along that like give you a second win, a third win, a fourth, a fifth win. And like definitely for me, you know, there's been all types of incarnations, you know, from my first group that I was in like when I was like fresh out of, you know, being a college dropout group we called Sons of Zion back in the day to like yeah. To just be, you know, being a part of Rebel Alliance and, you know, dropping Madness in a Cup on the Rebel Alliance album. Um, I mean, so many things. Then the Def Jokes team, you know, being a part of, you know, that whole movement, brother. And then, you know, being with Thievery Corporation later on in, 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 in the whole movement. And then, to, you know, to, to meet you and to build and to just be able to come back to that raw, gritty, unadulterated, savage hip hop shit, man. That, that that's what really runs through my veins, you know what I'm saying? So to connect with you and I mean for you to be such a strong purveyor of the culture with the beats you make, bruh, and then to be like, okay, and then you you and I just connect as people, you know what I mean? That's the thing. It's like that's why Vanguard is able to exist and why, you know, why we're doing this today is because, you know, yeah, we had interest in doing business together, aka making records together, but like the friendship was real off the bat. The chemistry was real as human beings. You know what I'm saying? So we were able to proceed. I'm glad you feel the same way, my man. Thank you for mm -hmm. saying thank you as well for those kind of words. Um, yo, let's jump into this interview real quick. Yeah, um, let's do it. You know, okay, I want to ask you, it's kind of cliche, but I think it's a good way to lead off. You know, what's what's the first memory you had um when you were like, Man, yeah, I need to do this MC thing? When was it and does it is it a specific instance where you were like, yeah, I gotta do this, bro? I'll tell you, yo, I went to Colgate University, upstate New York. You know what I'm saying? Ivy I League school, right? Ivy League What's school. What's up? I, is that yeah, not well, it's like they consider it like on the. It's like not officially an Ivy League school, but it's like on the fringes of the Ivy League, like small college. You know, you're lucky to get in. I don't know how the hell I got in. Because you know you're a smart motherfucker. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. But, yo, I was supposed to be a lacrosse goalie for them. I was a lacrosse goalie in high school. I was doing crazy shit like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, anyways, bro, I went up there thinking I was going to, oh, my bad, my bad, hold up. I'm in the whip. No, you good. Timed up. The whip timed up on me. Hold on, I got to turn, turn this bad boy up. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me know if the engine is too loud. I hope it's not. You know no, nah, you're good, you good. Okay, but Pete, man, so, like, I went to college thinking I was going to be pre-med, bro. I went there, like, oh, Lyft MD all the way. This is, this is before I was even Lyft, you know what I mean? So, you know, but then I realized, yo, I can't do this early in the morning shit. Like, I can't do biology class at 8 a.m. That's, that's not me. So I was like, I got to come up with some shit. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let me declare myself an English major. And then I was just like, man, I'm just, like, not into school in general, but I think me realizing that my educational path in terms of structured education in school had come to a close was really just, it, it basically opened me, my heart up to be like, yo, well, what do you, what the fuck do you really care about? What do you want to do? And bro, I had been such an avid hip hop fan for so long. And what I didn't realize, bro, so it, this, it, so it happened for me in college is the real answer to your question. This yeah. is probably like, this is probably like, say like in, back in like 94 or something like that you know what i'm saying but like end of 93 94 actually bro you know what it really was yo my, i gotta give props to my dukes right here my, oh, yeah. my, my mom so i was up at colgate which is a super isolated place it's in hamilton new york right yeah i didn't have a whip you know what i'm saying it's a cool place if you had a whip and you could get the fuck out of there but i was just there mom dukes used to ship hip-hop packages to me like it was oh, just, like it was dope it you know what I mean? like like i would literally send my dukes like i'd send her the word like yo i need de la soul balloon mind state i need black moon enter the stage and yeah. mom dukes was shit so she would ship them to me but in this instance she came to visit me at the school bro she brought with her she brought enter the stage she brought midnight marauders i think it was oh. yeah this oh. is 90 this is so this is nine november of 93 Mom just yeah. came up to Colgate to visit me. She brought Midnight Marauders into the stage and um, Wu-Tang 36 Chambers, bro. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So this is when I'm at the crossroads, like, what the fuck am I even doing in college? What am I going to do? 
that it, I'm already an avid hip hop fan for years before this. But then when those records hit, bro, and I got to sit with those like one after the next. Like imagine getting all three of those records like at once. You I, know I mean, I mean? No, those are flawless albums. Flawless. Literally. Flawless, bro. So it's like I'm 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 in my dorm room taking this shit in, and I'm just like, yo, dude, the 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 desire to MC it like overpowered me, bro. Like I couldn't. You know what I mean? It was just like, oh, man, like, you might have to do this. Then you know what the real icing on the cake was, bro? It was leading up to Illmatic. So in 94, Gangstar dropped Hard to Earn. You know oh. what I'm saying? J-Ru dropped Sun Rises in the East. Okay? Mm. And then Nas, leading up to Illmatic, I'll never forget reading how the source portrayed Nas, man. They just had this, like, a blurry photo of him. I feel like it's the same one he might have used on the Magic album recently or whatever. But like, okay. yo, bro, they spoke about him. They were just like, yo, this dude is the second coming, basically. when they I remember they that, bro. Bro, captivated. My mind exploded. So I'm up there. I'm I'm going to school in the boondocks, but I'm taking in this, like, mythical description of Nas in the source. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm hearing classic album after classic album, bro. And I was like, at that point, I was like, man, I got to I was like, I fucking got to go for it, bro. So I yep. saved every penny I had at fucking college, bro. Everything. I mean, I, dude, I was like, I was taking shorts on food. I was eating whatever I could do to fucking hustle and stack some dough to pay for a studio session to go into the lab. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? And that was it. Dropped out of school with a one song demo and the rest is history, bro. The rest is fucking history. That's so inspirational the way you're talking about investing in, in yourself and what you love doing. Cause that's one thing I'm really trying to get across to the people that that follow me on social media and the people that support what I'm doing. Yeah. Everybody, you know, you find something you love doing, get as good as you possibly can at it. Invest oh, yeah. in yourself and you you'll see rewards times a million it's it's ridiculous so I, I, that's so true me and you could talk about talk for like three hours but i'm gonna try to keep this moving yeah no doubt. i just i could just literally now based off what you said i could ask you 50 million different questions but bro i know you and i could definitely chop it up on shit yeah definitely so i'll have to have you back on again so yeah. yo so mm -hmm. i wanted to ask you um i'll move to this one top five mcs that dead are dead or alive let me guess see if these three are on it Chuck D, KRS One, Rakim, do they make the list for you? Woo! You know what, man? Chuck moved mountains for me. Okay, the Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Hold Us Back album by Public Enemy changed my fucking world, dog. Like, yeah. changed my world. It was like for me, man. I'm blessed that I had two strong-minded, great parents at home. But like, Chuck D was like. So I had a mom and a dad. Chuck was like my second dad. Or he was like he was like that mentor outside the crib to be like, yo, when you're out in the world, stay wise, stay alert, and don't fuck up. Like, this shit is no game out here. So Chuck, Chuck, in terms of impact, deserves to be on the list. The reason he's not on my top five is mm -hmm. just because it's a longevity thing. I know PE's still doing their thing, but, like, you know, I feel like for me, Takes a Nation, Takes a Nation of Millions album, um, uh, Fear of a Black Planet album. And then Apocalypse 91, I feel like, is a tear down. So for me, it's Takes a Nation Millions is untouchable. Fear of a Black Planet, I love it, but it didn't have quite the same impact on me. Then Apocalypse 91 is a little further removed. And then I feel like, you know, it, P, it, there was they put out a lot of records in a short span of time. And maybe, I don't want to say that there was some potency loss, but it, they didn't all hit me the same way. Yeah, yeah. So for, so for me, Chuck is like, Chuck, like, sits on a mantle where his impact is so profound. It's like he doesn't even need to be in the top five for me. But yeah, for me, like, top five is like Nas is in there, bro. Nas is still ruling, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's still gunning, man. And he's yeah. getting more prolific with it. You know, dropping King's Disease 1, King Disease 2, uh, you know, and then the Magic album. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yo, man, I'm still fucked up off of Rock Him's bars off of the Follow the Leader album. I'm <laughs> I'm legit still fucked up. Like, when I need to go in here, like, flawless execution on some shit, I'll listen to, like, No Competition by the R. Or I'll listen to, like, Lyrics of Fury, you know what I mean? Like, just to get myself pumped. Like, yo, like, wh like how did someone achieve this? Um, yo, KRS-One, the fact that he's still gunning like he is, I can't oh. believe. Like, I have, to, I have to put him on there because it's like, how the fuck do you... Back on back on the by all means necessary album 
in like '88. This dude said, um, he was like, he was like, he was like, he was like, 50 years down the line, you could start this, cause, we, cause we'll be the old school artists, and even in that time, I'll rip a rhyme, a brand new style, ruthless and wild. Yeah. Running around the world, spending money, having fun. Because even then, I'm still number one. Yo, KRS is my shit, man. I can't. <laughs> Bro, how do you say that shit 30 years ago? Like, like it's like he was right, bro. I know he's not like, look, the, the game has changed. Yo, yeah. KRS, he ain't number one like how he was. Right. But, yo, but the caliber of the MC, like the Crazy. tour dates, him on stage. The he's versus battle, he just showed he still got it. You seen the versus battle he did? Yeah, he's deadly, dog. Like, it, there's only a few MCs that I would say would ever want smoke with KRS. And that would be, that'd have to be like Eminem and maybe Busta Rhymes. Like, no, you don't really want it with, with KRS, bro. You don't too much want it. Pedigree. No, yeah, you don't you, want that. If you get challenged, you may accept the challenge, but you don't want it. You don't want no smoke with that. You don't want dude. that. You know what I'm saying? Dude, like, you, don't a, wanna, you don't want to draw that card like, oh, I got to battle KRS. Fuck that. Bro, so, I'll so, tell you real quick. I first <laughs> heard him on the self-titled album. I went back mm -hmm. to Return of the Boom Bap and I, mm -hmm. uh, uh, blew my mind. Anyways, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, rappers are in danger and shit like that. Like, come on, bro. So Shout so, out yeah, DJ Cream. Premier. Anyways, go ahead. So, go ahead, go ahead. Preem, Preem, untouchable. So, okay, so we got Nas, we got Rakim, we got KRS. Um, Man, you know, I'd say that four and five for me, I'm just going to kind of throw out names that just, you know, I think they just deserve it. Like, you know, you, I think Cool Keith has to be in there Word. to some extent just because of, like, what he brought to the game, just, like, the off-the-wallness and, like, the – I don't know. There's, there's, there's something I got to I gotta give props to Cool Keith. Um, Word. And then, and then for a fifth, man, it's like, man, it gets challenging for me. Like, I, I know that – well, look, man. I'm just going off of what I listen to nowadays when I need to, like, hear pure excellence. Yo, G-Rap, man, like, G-Rap oh. on the song Death Wish, you know what I'm saying? Like, off of the, his second album. Or, like, mm -hmm. G... I mean, there's just so many moments on that album. Or just... There's so many moments where G-Rap says shit where I'm like, man, how did he... How was his breath control... How was he able to dice that phrase like that? So, I know I'm sticking with, like, older school artists. There's a lot of cats that are newer that are doing damage, you know, like... Pusha T does damage. I mean, yeah, yeah. New, new Pusha T shit, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the subject matter ain't really in line with how I'm living, but Pusha T be hitting hard. But yeah, yeah. If, I, if, if I'm going with my top five, I, I, I'll be at peace with those for now. I love it. I love it. Um, thank you for sharing that with me. So, let's move it along. Um, mm -hmm. Briefly, tell me what was underground indie hip hop like when you first got into it compared to how you see it today? And do you think it has changed for the better or the worse or not? About? Right. Right. So, yo, man, when I was coming up, bro, it was like, yo, I didn't know that there was going to be an independent industry there to support me, bro. I dropped out of college with a one song demo, just like this, this is, this is what I got. You know what I mean? Like, like, I, you know, hoping that the world would embrace me. I didn't know if that meant that I had to try to fuck around and get on a major label. I had no concept of the independent industry. All there was out for independent music was Company Flow and J Live. That was it that I was aware of, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yo, man, back in the day, there was the energy of the excitement that there even was an independent in industry. I mean, that mm -hmm. people were starting record labels and having success putting out vinyl. And then, man, it was just so much about the skills, man. It was... It was about, you know, if you were in New York, you were probably outside of the New York Rican Cafe, like in a cypher, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's what it was, man. It was just cats outside ciphering, everybody hungry, man. Just like mm -hmm. trying to sharpen their skills and being a part of Boston's like renaissance or the birth of the Boston independent hip hop scene. I'm so honored to have been part of it, man, because like that's what it was. It was a bunch of people who loved an art form that realized that there was actually a place for them to like, actually turn it into a business and then to be like wait and then turn it into a business we can put our city on the map it was so exciting as for what it is now obviously the independent industry is very established i can't claim to know the nuances of it i thank god that i don't have to come up in it now 
Because yes. I, I just wouldn't really, you know, it's, it feels kind of ethereal to me with like everyone having the ability to like, everyone has a home studio. Everyone can just upload something to SoundCloud or YouTube. It's like, it's so tough to keep track of. So I can't say that I really know um, exactly what it takes to break through if I had to start over right now. But, yeah. um, but I will say that like, look, there's going to be pros and cons to like people having a ton of access to what used to be coveted and, and tough to obtain, right? Used to have to, bro. In order to get my to have my full studio session, bro, I had to literally skip meals, save money. Then I had to go sleep on on my on my homie's concrete floors in Rochester, New York, because his family was so big they didn't have a bed for me when I came through, dog. I skipped Thanksgiving with my first Thanksgiving. I missed with my family. I had to go sleep on that concrete floor with the thin blanket over over me, man, and just try to rest up. And then the fucking producer skipped out. He didn't even come home. So I was prepared to miss Christmas. You know what I mean? But now it's like, you know, I don't know what types of sacrifices. People, people have to probably have to make sacrifices just to get the studio gear, right? But they're recording in the crib. Um, look, man, I can't say it's better or worse. I just hope that people take the opportunity when they're making music to realize, man, like, yo, having a microphone in front of you is a powerful thing. You got to utilize that shit to the fullest, you know? If you're if you're a black man or a black woman speaking into a microphone, please recognize, man, in this country, you weren't always able to do that shit. Use yeah. your time wisely. Black man and black woman used to not have a fucking voice out here. That's true. So it's like, that's when I, why when I step to the mic, I ain't trying to fucking waste people's time with what I'm saying. And you don't. You don't waste people's time. I like that answer, man. Thank you for elaborating on that. That was very profound, articulated, very succinctly and effectively. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you I'm going to give you one more question. I'm going to let you get going because I know you got things to do. And I appreciate mm. you being here. Um, Matt, Stu, I appreciate you, brother. Likewise. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. It's a simple one. It's a, it's a softball. What are you currently working on and where can fans support Mr. Lift Music at? Man, you know I'm working on that Vanguard, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> you, come, come on. Wait, hold on. What am I working on? <laughs> Look, Look, Yo, I dude. thought you could talk about the real estate too, though. Also, I, oh, okay, okay, I could talk. Okay, I could talk about that too. I could if talk you about want to, that, if you want to. Yeah, no, I want to. But on the music tip, I'm yeah. gonna tell you, like I told you before, there's a there's a Mr. Lift album that's been floating around for a while that I owe to Mellow Music Group. Yes. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know why I haven't submitted it yet. Really, all I gotta do is get it mastered. The record is done. Okay. Hell yeah. That record is called Return of the Colossus. Hey, you need to send that to your boy. I need someone to bump, man. Right, but I, I know, and I need to get your opinion. Like, I need to know, like, yo, Studer, I come correct on this shit? What you think? You know what I mean? Man, so You, already, I need you to, already know, man. Well, but I got, you know what I'm saying? I want your ears on it, bro. So I got to send that shit to you. Send that but book. So I got I to gotta, I gotta submit that to the label. But then after that, bro, it's Vanguard, bro. That's the legacy yeah. right there. It's like, you know... I, the reason that the second Vanguard record's been so delayed is life happened, for real, for real. You know to what I'm saying? To everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, to everybody. But uh, but you know, but yeah, Vanguard is is the musical legacy going forward. That's what's planned. Okay, so oh, what, someone said I we need an Orion's belt too. Oh shit. Okay. My Shout out to Rich Ray. So an S. <laughs> word up. But um, but yeah, but but then other than other than music, man, it's like I've been, you know, I. In 2018, I founded a real estate investment company in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. uh, I've been living in Rhode Island since 2018. Uh, I've been able to, with you know, with the help of my investors, uh, my investors who are mostly my close friends, family, friends of friends in certain circumstances, been able to, you know, amass a portfolio of uh, 14 multifamily properties spanning 64 apartments. You awesome. know what I'm saying? And that's all from, that's literally from, friends and family the first Hell. person i invested with was mom dukes me what? and mom dukes bought a four unit then we bought a two unit then we bought another four unit you know what i'm saying Hell um yeah. me and me and the bass player from thievery corporation you know we, we we bought a six unit and then uh in 2020 and then last year we bought another five units together my my my, my former tour manager and i just closed on four units last fall my real estate mentor. So I'm doing partnerships with people. And in other cases, I'm basically raising capital, right? So basically, you know, and I know everyone knows banks don't pay us shit in terms of interest on the money that we keep in banks. Nothing. 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 It's fucking shameful, right? Because I'm old enough to remember when banks actually used to give you some interest, right? So, um, 
So basically what my company does is pay pretty aggressive interest rates when we borrow money from investors. So sure. like say someone, you know, some, someone brings 20 grand or 40 grand to my company, the People's Trust Investment Group. Well, we're going to sign a promissory note saying, hey, you know, whether it's 8% or 9%. I mean, right now we have a product that starts at 9% and then it creeps up 1% every year until you hit 12%. Then it stays there for two years. The overall investment is a six-year investment, right? So yeah. but it's basically people. Work, that's why it's called the People's Trust Investment Group because I'm working with people. My whole philosophy is fuck banks. What what did banks do for us in this fucking country, bro? They they gave out a bunch of phony baloney loans back in like 04, 05, 06, 07. Fucking crashed the economy in 08. You know what I'm saying? Putting people out of their homes. I, I'm not with that shit. So my company is basically, my company is to banks what Uber is to fucking, ta was to taxis, bro. Taxis Dope. were running up the meter on motherfuckers. Don't want to pick you up because you're black. Okay. Don't cry when Uber comes along and knocks y'all motherfuckers out the box, right? Just a little competition. A little competition, right? So my company is not big enough to be given banks competition. And I know that they wouldn't take take me lightly if I, if I was getting that big. I'd probably have to, you know, that shit could get stressful. But I'm just saying, like, like, it's my own way of taking, like, a lot of the activism that I've promoted in my music over the years. And just my perspective, just like, yeah, lots of the parts of the system I'm not with particularly the banks. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers crashed the economy just like, what, 14 years ago or something like yeah, that? Now yeah. you now you back here and you don't want to offer motherfuckers interest? Like, that's bold. Dog, think about how bold that is, Stu. That, that's like, that's almost like, yo, if you ran up on somebody, punched them in their fucking shit, punched them in their face, caved their fucking nose and knocked their teeth in, they had to get their jaw wired, right? Then you came back around a couple of years later just like, you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't even have a good comparison. Like no, you're not offering them shit. You're not even offering them good friendship. But you expect them to give you the world. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's just crazy. It's well, like, I see. I see it with young bangers because he's amassed some money off of his his beats that he's making. You put yeah. it in the savings account. The interest is. So it's like Nothing. you gotta you gotta put it like in a five twenty nine account. Do something that's gonna. But you know for the education. But can, it's a joke. No, exactly. It's a joke. So my company is really 8% and up. And like I said, right now we're working on a product that starts at 9% yeah. interest per annum. So my, my investors receive interest only payments every month. Okay. Sure. Like clockwork. Um, and then, uh, and then it, it'll tick up to 12%. And then at the end of the overall promissory note, after six years, then they get paid back their total lump sum that they, so if someone invested 20, 20 grand, they're going to get their interest for all six years. Then they're going to get their 20 grand back. And, um, and they're also getting a five, they're getting 5% of the appreciation of the property that they invested in. So let's yeah. say I go and buy a four unit building in Pawtucket and that's the, the, the building that you put 20 grand toward at the end of your six year term of your promissory note, we're going to go and get an appraisal on the property. So we know, what what was it appraised at when you started with your investment? What did it appraise at when you ended your investment? And then on top of all the interest you've earned for the six years and getting your 20 grand back, you're going to get 5% of what that appreciation was. So if the property appreciated 150 grand, uh, or say, let, let's just say 100 grand because it's just an easy number. If it appreciated 100 grand during that six years, you're getting an extra $5,000 as a thank you for doing business with the company. Sounds so that's good. how I'm doing business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love yeah, it. man. The People's Trust Investment Group. So that's my thing away from hip hop that I've been, you know, sinking a lot of hours into. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard the man. If that sounded interesting to you, you know how to get in touch with him. Vanguard mm -hmm. 2 is coming soon. I want to thank my friend and fellow collaborative artist. You've been there for me through a tough time in my life right now. I've looked up to you when I first started getting into making beats and now... I'm lucky enough to call you a collaborator, and I just want to thank you for joining me this evening, man. Yo, Stu, thank you for having me, brother. You know, it's, like I said, man, it's just, you know, you know how it is, man. You get later in life, the friendships become a little tougher to come by because we're, you know, we're busy being dads or whatever it is, man. But life, you know, you get, you get a little older, responsibilities, they start to stack up. You can't be hanging out like you used to. A lot of those ways that we used to make friends and bond, they, you know, they fall to the background a bit, man. So... <laughs> these later in life friends, like the friendship that we've been building is yeah. so appreciated. And th then the fact that we can bring out the best in each other artistically as well, huge plus, right. my brother.
So thanks for having me today, man. Thank you, man. Have a good night, and we'll be building on some music. Send me that damn album, all right? Yeah, yeah, I got to send you that <laughs> album, brother. I know I got to do it. And anyone out there that wants to um, reach out to my uh, company, the, for, for real estate stuff, it's written on my IG. So just go to the, at the real Mr. Lip on IG, and you'll see the, uh, the email address is right on there for real estate stuff. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in. I saw some nice, thing, nice things being said from you all, man. So thank you for listening over the years, Stu. You fucking monster, dog. Keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I just love seeing you grow, man. You know what I'm saying? Much love, brother. Thank you, man. We'll be talking All right. soon. All right. Peace. All right. Peace. Peace. peace.